guys, what is up? Hey, Drew Tubers, it's Drew the California Picker. Welcome back to my channel, California Pickin'. Hey, thanks for stopping by. I know it's on uh, short notice, but hey, I'm going to show you an amazing vintage classic rock and roll haul that I just made, vinyl haul. I love my vinyl albums, and I have a great collection of vinyl. And I've done many videos on this before, but I was at the little thrift store today and I wasn't, you know, I don't even look at that stuff really anymore. It takes a lot of time to go through album bins and look at all through that stuff. And I just was like, hey, what's up, Patty? Patty Yurk fan, how you doing? Um, so yeah, just it was a coincidence that I basically saw that there was a box full of albums and I recognized the very famous album that was at the front of the box and I started looking into it and the box all had great, great classic 60s and 70s rock and roll classic vinyl in there in really good shape. Some, you know, hey, what is up, Teresa? How you doing? So we're, we're going to show you some classic uh, vinyl albums from the 60s today. And I, I'm really pretty pumped up. And then I'm going to tell you the price at the end. So stay tuned to the end. You'll know how much I paid for it. And you'll know how much these things are worth. I'm just going to give you an approximate value. I haven't looked up any of them, but I kind of know, you know, more or less what they could go for. And whenever you're talking about classic vinyl, guys, you're talking about some big money per per album. OK, so stay tuned for that. It's going to be good. Uh, hey, if not, go check out one of my other 900 videos by now. I'm sure there's something there for you. But in the meantime, hit like and subscribe, guys. Make sure that bell symbol is hit punched and activated on your account so that you can see whenever I make a new video that's important because sometimes YouTube just kind of I don't know makes that bell symbol go away I don't know why that is but make sure your bell symbol is checked make sure that you've subscribed and hit like and comment of course tell me what you think do you like any of these albums that I'm gonna show you today so uh, we're in my laundry room here you can tell but it's a great place to shoot videos at the end of the day I get really good light in here and this is always the best place to photograph my my collectibles. Now, I haven't been doing a lot of picking videos lately. You've been seeing me do a lot of exploration and other exposés on Marilyn or, you know, Charles Manson or, you know, JFK or whoever, Ronan Farrow or Frank Sinatra, whatever. I've been busy on those other kind of videos and I haven't been doing as many picking videos as I used to do. I did about 700 picking videos and then I kind of changed the format of my channel to be more of a variety because I have many interests and, uh, and, and activities that I'd like to show you. So I don't want you to get bored with just picking, but I'm always going to do this and I'm a little overwhelmed with the amount of stuff that I have. So that's why I've slowed down on this picking thing. It's actually kind of a hoarding disease, let's say, if you don't sell stuff. So I know you guys probably understand that when you have too much stuff and everybody's downsizing and, you know, when you just keep collecting nonstop and, you know, you have a voracious appetite like me, that's what happens. So let's get to it. Let me switch cameras. Hold on here. See if we can switch the camera around and we'll start with this stack over here. We have two stacks to show you and it's 30 albums I got today. 30 albums vinyl albums and uh if any of what you know some people don't know that these vinyl albums are now becoming collectible oh it says bad connection come on really i'm getting a bad connection you want to let me know is this a bad connection? are you seeing what i'm showing you or hearing are you hearing okay? I'll come back and start again if I have to. I don't know why there's a bad connection. Maybe it went away. Let me know in the comments. Are you seeing what I'm showing you right now? Can you see pretty well? It says bad connection. What do I got? How many bars? Let me see. It says I got four bars. Let me know, hey, Teresa or Patty, can you see see what I'm showing you right now? Let me know. Can you see what I'm showing you? Okay, 
How's it look? Hey, dirty water, what's up? Looks looking good. Okay, it's just a false alarm. Hey, dirty water, we're we're showing you a whole record haul today that I came across. Just came across this just a half an hour ago. Good. Thank you, Teresa. You can hear me and see me. It says bad connection, but I'll keep on going. What the heck? So the first album, guys, is one of my very favorite all-time albums. If you're kind of a aficionado of great rock and roll, you know which album this. It doesn't even have a name. It was never officially named. But it's the Stairway to Heaven album, and it's Led Zeppelin. And here it is. It's got the uh, old man at the top of the mountain, and it's a it's a fold out type of record album. And there's many things that go into judging and and basically valuing an album. I didn't have a chance to clean any of these guys, so I'm showing them to you just in the same condition that I found them. But what I'm going to do later is I'm going to take this cleaner, this record cleaner. And I'm going to clean each one of these albums so they're going to really look good because you can see there's there's some uh, there's some fingerprints on here and I'll show you exactly how you should hold an album. It's kind of hard to do with one hand, but you want to pull it out just by the rim like that. You never want to put your fingers like that. You know, you want to hold it right there on the rim and hold it and then on with your other hand just hold the other rim so you're not touching the grooves because over time that oil will kind of stain the album but look at the album I mean this this is a pretty good album it's in pretty good condition it's not great but uh, these albums are judged on many things the cover number one the album of course inside and how scratched it is or in what shape it's in how many times it's been played and there's a whole grading system on that. It's too much to go into, but go check out my other video called, I think, How You Grade Record Grade Albums or Vinyl or something like that. Drew shows you how, Drew shows you his record collection, something like that. I don't know. But I go into heavy detail on um, how to judge and value albums. And I'd say most of these albums today are what would be called fine, very fine. Um, I'm not sure if I have any excellent or pristine mint or anything like that in there. Near mint, those are all terms used by these record collectors. And I am not a f true aficionado, so I don't know at all. I just know a little bit to, you know, get in trouble. You know how that goes. So let me put that one to the side. Next, we have the doors, guys. Wow. Hello, I love you. This is, and then Waiting for the Sun. This is a great album. Well, let me let me just bring this. I'm sorry, I didn't go through the, the songs on this Led Zeppelin album. I want to go through them because they are great songs. So you have Black Dog. You know that song, Rock and Roll. Been a long time since a rock and roll. Battle of Evermore. Stairway to Heaven on this side one. There's a little scratch right there that's going to hurt the value. But when I tell you what I bought these for at the end of the video, you'll see that this is going to be a money maker. And over here we have Misty Mountain Hop, Four Sticks, Going to California, When the Levee Breaks. So great album overall, classic. The Doors, as I said, Hello, I Love You. There's Jim Morrison. And let's see what's on this album, guys. Hello, I Love You. Love Street. Not to Touch the Earth, Summer's Almost Gone, Wintertime Love, The Unknown Soldier, Spanish Caravan, My Wild Love, We Could Be So Together, Yes, The River Knows, and Five to One. A lot of those songs I do not recognize, but in good condition. Um, it's got Jim's poetry over here. Jim Morrison was a great poet. Let's take a look at the album and see what kind of condition it's in. Yeah, I could use some cleaning. You know, there's some uh, dust and uh, some fingerprints, but no bad scratches on that so far. If I had both hands, I would hold it up to the light. And you look at both sides. You want to make sure that the spine right here is not split. That will, that will affect the value. Uh, either top, bottom, or side. 
and then see this little ring around here this is caused by um, age because the album inside when it's being pressed together starts to form that little uh, that little um, wear pattern right there and that you don't want but many older albums will have that on them and that's sort of you're not it's not going to be mint or near mint but um, somebody's going to be able to ignore that just because the vinyl on the inside is good. So this is Three Dog Night, a very big rock and roll group back in the 70s. And they were known for albums or songs like Eli's Coming and Joy to the World and One. And uh, One is the Loneliest Number and... Uh, they just were one of the biggest bands around. Then this guy got into drugs, and the whole thing fell apart. He was basically homeless. But uh, Three Dog Night, we're going to go through. Next is Jethro Tull, one of my all-time favorite bands. The guy played flute and sang. And Martin Barr right here was the electric guitar player that was so amazing. Oh, wait. No, maybe... No, that's him right there. That's Ian Anderson is the lead singer and flute player for Jethro Tull. This seems to be in really good condition, this album, at least on the outside, which is always a good sign because for it to be mint or near mint, you're going to have to have a near mint or mint condition record cover um, jacket. And this has some great... Uh, look! Oh, look at that. Oh, it jumped out at us. Look at that. I didn't expect that. Let me see that again. Watch. Whoa, they just jump out at you. That's funny. That's great. Let's see. Nothing is easy is on this song. New Day. Yep. Jethro Tull. Not their most famous album called stand up here's one called benefit let me um let me just read some of your comments before i go a little bit ringware exactly guys thank you for coming up with that ringware i know ringware from uh wait 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 i know ringware from uh bauer or uh fiesta wear <laughs> but yeah that's ringware there's a little bit right there this album called benefit Nothing is easy. No, nothing to say. Uh, teacher. That's a good song. This is not one of their most famous albums. The, their most famous album is Aqualung. The Jefferson Starship Red Octopus. Nice cover with gold leaf. There is Grace Slick. She's the only female in the band. This is Papa John Creech. This is Paul Kantner, Marty Ballin. This was the lead singer. He traded the lead singer role with Grace off and on. Uh, this is, I believe this is Greg Jacizo, or I think that's his name. These other guys, I can't remember their names, but they're all great. And this one had a, some good songs on it. Miracles. Funny You Believe in Miracles. Play on Love. Um, some good songs on that one. Yeah. Next, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, Elton John. Man, this guy was so prolific in the 70s. In good condition. This is a pretty good condition album. Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. Yep. So, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. There's my little tribute to him. Great songs on that album. This is one of the biggest albums of all time. In fact, it was the biggest album of all time. It's the biggest selling live album of all time still. But at one time, this was both the biggest selling album of all time and the biggest live selling album of all time. Frampton Comes Alive until, I believe, Thriller, Michael Jackson's Thriller, I believe, Yes, Bernie was the prolific one. He was the writer of the lyrics, and Elton John was the writer of the music, and they collaborated and just made pure magic. But it's true, you know, Elton John is not as talented as somebody like Stevie Wonder or Prince that does it all. 
So he's just a great singer, a great front man, but he didn't do it all. You're right. It's just half of the combination. Now, Frampton comes alive. This guy was so innovative. Let me tell you about Frampton. Peter Frampton used to play with a band called Procol Harum. And he sung, he played guitar in this band really when he was young. And, and their most famous songs were Whiter Shade of Pale and Conquistador were two big, big albums for Procol Harum. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Got it wrong. I correct myself. That was, I was thinking of Robin Trower. Sorry, excuse me. This is Peter Frampton. He was in, um, he was in the band with Steve Marriott. Um, gosh, I got those mixed up. Sorry about that. But yeah, but Peter Frampton also was a young guitarist in that band with Steve Marriott. Uh, and then he broke away on his own and formed his own band, Frampton Comes Alive. And he was just a big heartthrob back then. Humble Pie, there you go. Thank you. Humble Pie. Thank you, Thrifty. And Sassy Cat, what is up? So we're showing everybody this little vinyl haul that I got today as a pure fluke going into a, a, a little thrift store I saw. I usually don't check all these bins because it's just too much time to go through them all. Donovan's Mellow Yellow. Greatest Hits, Mellow Yellow, Sunshine, Superman, Hurdy Gurdy Man. Man, this guy had some big hits. I don't know where he went. He kind of faded into the woodwork. Donovan. Next, we have a 70s classic, The Eagles. Let's see. Ooh. Hey, I got ripped off. No, I didn't. It's in there. The album's in there. But The Greatest Hits, Taking It Easy, Witchy Woman, Lion Eyes, Already Gone, Desperado, One of These Nights, Tequila Sunrise, Take It to the Limit, Peaceful, Easy Feeling, Best of My Love. Wow, what an album, guys. Wow, the, the Eagles. Next, we have Crosby, Stills, and Nash, and Young, and this is a great album, Deja Vu. Looks like it's in pretty good shape. There's not a lot of ring wear, as you say, and the picture is pretty pristine right here. I haven't checked the album. I checked all these albums before I bought them and they were all decent, you know. Maybe it has a tiny little scratch here or there, but when you hear what I paid for them, it, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, you got the greatest hits. Yeah, just like the one yesterday. Wow, that's funny. Amazing. So a little bit about Crosby, Stills, and Nash and Young. These three guys met at Mama Cass Elliott her house in Benedict Canyon, she had, uh, no, sorry, Laurel Canyon, which is here in LA, and a little bit of haven for all the different uh, musicians of the day, the Monkees, Jimi Hendrix, all the people would gather over at Mama Cass Elliott's house. Uh, that was, I believe, in Laurel Canyon. And um, one day they were there and they met and uh, Crosby, Stills, and Nash got together after that. So she was kind of a yenta Jewish lady. You know, she kind of probably set up a lot of people. How's it going, Linda? How are you? Thrifty Flipside and, let's see, Sassy Cat in the House. This album's got some great songs on it, I think. Just great songs. Anyway, we won't go through that because I can't see that. Next is The Doors again. Another Doors album. We have a little ring wear there. No biggie, I guess, but it's in pretty good shape. This album has some great songs on it also. Break on through, through the other side. Crystal Ship, 20th Century Fox, Alabama Song, Light My Fire. Back Door Man, I Love You, uh, End of the Night, Take It As It Comes, and This Is The End. My only friend, the end. There you go. That was Jim Morrison and the Doors. Fleetwood Mac, always a big, big album. Their biggest, I believe. This is Rumors, right? Is this Rumors? Uh, gosh, some big songs on here. World Turning landslide yeah is this rumors guys what is this album is there it's just there's nothing on it 
<laughs> Mick Fleetwood. Yeah, it is hard to find good copies of any of these, really, when you come to think of it, Thrifty. Here we have Steely Dan. This is one of my all-time favorite bands. These guys combine rock and jazz and pop like nobody else has ever done. And I actually went to a concert the other night, and it was the Doobie Brothers opening for Steely Dan at the Forum. And we had a great time. I uh, recorded a lot of music, so maybe one day I'll be putting those out on um, YouTube. So we'll just see how that goes. But Steely Dan, Countdown to Ecstasy, guys. This is one of the best albums. Well, every album is great from these guys. Uh, the Boston Rag, Gold Teeth, Showbiz Kids, My Old School, Pearl of the Quarter, King of the World. This is Donald Fagan right here. He's this lead singer of the band. This was... This was... Uh, wait, here we go. This is, where's Walter Becker? There's Walter Becker, his partner. This is Denny Diaz. He plays lead guitar. And I believe that's the other singer, possibly. And this is Jeff Skunk Baxter, who later joined St uh, the Doobie Brothers and played on Minute by Minute. Jeff Skunk Baxter, great guitar player. One of my all-time favorite albums countdown to ecstasy now this stevie wonder's got to be one of the biggest musical geniuses of all times because he can play every single instrument on this album in fact i don't think there's anybody else on this album it was just stevie playing all himself there's a little braille right there and uh yes walter becker is dead now he just died and i went to the steely dan concert the other night and he was sorely missed and I tell you what, they didn't replace him. They didn't try to put somebody in his place. I don't know why that was, but they do need another guitar player, I would say. And uh, unfortunately, I have to say, Donald Fagan's voice is fried. He was using some kind of auto assist, and he sounded like he was like Mickey Mouse or something. But the music was still great, but uh, we can sort of forgive them because they're older and... You know, who knows when we're going to see them again. Um, and who knows how long anybody's going to be around because his partner just died out of nowhere. Some ring wear there. Yeah, I know that's not good, but really great album. Talking Book. Inner Visions was my very one of my first albums. I think it was my first album. Now, moving over here, I got this the other day. So this was not part of today's haul. But I never showed it to you, so I might as well show it to you. So there's 30 albums plus this album, so 31 albums total. Um, and this is the Partridge Family album. And I thought this was going to be a valuable album, but when I looked it up, it wasn't. <laughs> so no biggie on that one. But all these other ones are definitely desirable and collectible. And I've had some yard sales and put stuff on Craigslist, and I'm always getting calls. Hey, you guys, do you have any vinyl? Do you have any vinyl? So I have like three guys' numbers that will buy my vinyl. So that's why I pretty much bought this today because I know they'll come over and buy this stuff no matter what price because you just can't find this stuff everywhere, anywhere, you know? Or in a bunch, let's say. You, maybe you can find one or two. Chicago, Saturday in the Park. These guys were the best. Chicago, great musicians. Another Chicago... Let's see, Carol King, Tapestry. Let's see, I feel the earth move so far away, it's too late. Gosh, you got a friend. Wow, some big songs on that album by Carol King. And I'll just have to clean up all these albums. Donna Summer, the queen of disco. If you guys aren't old enough, Donna Summer, she passed away some years ago, but she was the queen of disco. And man, when you go into a disco and her album was on or her music was on, it was like magical. I mean, it'd make your like skin tingle because you'd come in and you'd eye the floor and you'd, you know, I'd find a girl to dance with and it was on, guys. <laughs> Donna Summer, back in the day. 
greatest hits on the radio. Let's see, on the radio, No More Tears. There's some more there on the radio. Love, uh, love to Love You, Baby. I Feel Love. Heaven Knows, Last Dance. That's the alt- ultimate song. MacArthur Bar, Hot Stuff, Bad Girls, Wow, Dim All the Lights, Sunset People. Get out of here, Donna. You were the best. Nobody's going to top you. You were the best. There will never be another Donna Summer. Rod Stewart used to play with Jeff Beck. In the Jeff Beck group in the Small Faces. I think the Small Faces or the Little Faces, one of the two. Rod Stewart. This guy still looks good for his age, man. He's, like all the people are all old and shriveled up. He looks pretty good, man. His his, his physique, he's still thin and, wow. I don't know, man. He's something. He's doing something right. Dave Mason, this is called uh, Head Keeper. Dave Mason actually, if you didn't know, played lead, sorry, he's played rhythm guitar on Jimi Hendrix's All Along the Watchtower. And there's a part where Jimi Hendrix plays when it goes to the break and he plays that little slide on the guitar that goes, mm-hmm. well, what it happened was he said to Dave Mason, hey, throw me your lighter. And he threw him with his, uh, his Zippo lighter and, and uh, Jimi Hendrix put that, used that as a slide on that one part of all on the watchtower, a little bit of. Jimi Hendrix trivia and Dave Mason trivia for you there. So this guy was well-respected, Dave Mason. Leon Russell, he was big back in the day, along with Cat Stevens and Elton John, and they were just big, these guys. Later, Bob Seger. Leon Russell. Don't shoot me, I'm a... Just the I'm only a piano player by Elton John, also in good condition. Not a lot of ring wear there. Let's look at the back. Yeah, pretty nice guys. Elton John, some good songs on this album. Let's check this out. Mm, Daniel, Daniel, my brother, you are. I don't want to get copyright infringed, but. Uh, Crocodile Rock. Yep, Crocodile Rock. He's playing a lot of honky tonk on that album. Mind Games by John Lennon. There's a picture of Yoko Ono. She's the one who kind of broke up the band. (laughs) So, uh,. Hey guys, if you're just joining us, we're looking at this vintage classic 60s vinyl haul. How's it going? Yeah, Teresa, I do sing it. Uh, Frampton's live album, my aunt's, yep. Tall and Frampton, yep, I agree. They are, you just can't get better than the 1960s and 70s in terms of music. This is, hold on, let me rip this out of the sleeve. This is Imagine by John Lennon, the plastic Ono band, but there's no cover unfortunately but somebody's going to have the cover and this album is in very fine condition very fine condition i think and uh we'll just have to clean that up and sell that on its own without the cover of captain fantastic uh elton john had the best covers guys the best album covers back then sorry this is kind of slipping down here giving me problems but um, Elton John had the best album covers, and if you're not old enough to know, or if you grew up with, uh, you know, CDs, you didn't you you didn't experience this era where the album cover was really so important to the success of the album, not just the music, but the album cover to go along with it. So important, and all these had great iconic album covers, and people designed these, and they. There, there were people that just did album covers, you know, and that is a lost art today. They don't do that anymore. They don't really care, you know, what it looks like because it's a little, you know, tiny little cover or a download doesn't even have an album or a cover. 
So here's Simon and Garfunkel, man. Bridge over trouble water. These guys, wow. They owned the radio waves way back when. They were all over. They just big hit makers. Simon and Garfunkel. They're still teaming up some from time to time. Bob Dylan. Like a rolling stone. And uh, there we go. Bob Dylan. Volume 2 Greatest Hits. Catch Bullet 4. We're coming to the end here. Catch Bullet 4. I mentioned Cat Stevens earlier. Cat Stevens converted to Islam and changed his name and left the music business. Imagine that. He was just on top of the world. He did the soundtrack for the movie Harold and Maud. You can watch that and hear all all Cat Stevens music. He was brilliant, guys. But he kind of just bowed out right at the time where he was at the top. He didn't like all the commercialism and whatever. He was swayed by Islam and uh, changed his name. And then, um, I don't know, just faded into the distance. Um, can't remember his Islamic name, but um, Cat Stevens. I still enjoy his music, although, you know, it's a little different. And ending with the best album out here, basically. It's probably not in the best condition, but Abbey Road by The Beatles. And this is a very famous shot of them crossing this street right here, right near Abbey Road Studios. And it's funny because the real shot shows them on this side of the street over here on this corner over here you can't see it it's out of frame but there's a very famous shot where they're standing right here and there's a lady helping one of them with their suit i don't know what it was but they were on this side of the street and they walked this way and they photographed them that way probably and then on the way back this is the shot that they used so but it could also have been flipped the, the image could have been reversed, and they were actually on this side of the street. I don't know, but there's like a little stylist lady over here with them, and she's kind of messing with their clothing. I think John's clothing, or, or maybe it was Paul's, but Paul is not wearing any shoes in this shot. And if any of you guys remember, there was a rumor going around that Paul is dead. And when Paul was stepping, let's see, Paul was kind of almost stepping on the black squares and he had no shoes they said he was buried with no shoes and all these different rumors if you guys remember any of that let me know in the comments it was absolutely hilarious they said that john uh, that uh, paul mccartney died and when he really actually hadn't and there's still a great rumor, guys. Maybe I'll do a video on it someday. The conspiracy that says that Paul McCartney, the real Paul McCartney, died. And that they found a replacement for him. And the Paul that we know today is a different Paul. And they compare their faces and they compare all sorts of other things. It's really funny. I don't buy it for a minute, but it still exists today. There's still controversy about Paul McCartney. And there's the back of the album yes this is the back come together something's in the way she moves maxwell silverhammer oh da oh darling please believe me i never leave you alone i love that song believe me when i tell you I never leave you alone. I got the words mixed up. Here come the sun. Because the world is round. Let's see. What else you got? Uh, mean Mr. Mustard. That was a good one. She came, she came in through the bathroom window. And uh, carry that weight. And a uh, good album there. Hope you uh, don't mind that I do a little singing from time to time. Yeah, they were they were all good-looking dudes. I used to kind of like... Uh, oh. Are you still there? Oh, okay. 
Hey, my device is getting kind of hot. It's telling me I got to go shut off my device because it's warming up. So thanks for joining me here at California Pickin'. Keep on picking. Check with me later. Maybe I'll be doing some more stuff, guys. Go check out my latest video with Omar and James where we went into the double haunted tunnel down in San Diego. Go check that out. If you can still hear me, I think I'm frozen right now. But hey, thanks for joining me, guys. Hit like and subscribe, of course. Keep on picking. Cheers later now. Bye now.